uh, did you ever see the Phantom? The Phantom. Yeah, it's like a very, very early superhero movie. Yeah, was he purple? Yeah, it, Billy Zane was the Phantom. Okay, I I remember just snippets of it. I don't have any okay. good in there. I saw that movie when I was like 11 years old in theaters. Blew your mind? I walked out of that movie convinced of two things. The movie was going to be a huge hit, <laughs> and Billy Zane was going to be a massive star. And I was so wrong about both things <laughs> i mean billy zane had a pretty prominent role in what was the like best-selling movie of all time for a very long time right yeah it didn't Titanic. really translate though didn't really translate didn't lead to him having leading no. man success right? i thought i thought he was gonna be a f-ing star <laughs> I, 11 year old me would have bet all the money he had on it like oh, your paper route worth of uh I f-ing broke <laughs> I mean, a broke a broke 11 year old because of billy zane uh, now how was the phantom 11 year old me thought it was tremendous. I don't think I've seen it you since then. You haven't seen it since. I okay. don't know, man. Is it bad enough to be on the podcast? That's a great question. We'll have to find out. Speaking of which, welcome to Bad Movies and Beer. I'm Cooper. And I'm Nolan. And today we are discussing Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight. Yes. Starring Billy Zane. Oh, so this one was on a two pack DVD. Yes, it was. Demon Knight with uh, Bordello of Blood. Which we will absolutely be watching in the future because it's probably worse than this. Yeah. Well, I definitely remember Bordello of Blood. That's one of those movies that 12 and 13-year-old boys definitely watched. Uh, at just, the just for the nudity? Edge of the internet age. Just for the nudity. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Before pornography was readily accessible. Yeah. When all it, you had was shitty movies that showed a lot of boobs. Yeah. When it had a load time, when you had to wait for those pictures to appear oh. on your, your computer, then you just <laughs> definitely remember worth watching days. those movies. Those were horrible days (laughs) horrible days so the movie demon knight yeah this was the translation of tales from the crypt tv show to the big screen tv show been running on hbo for a few years and was pretty successful and i'm 99 percent sure that the opening of this movie is just the exact opening from the tv show i'm like 99 percent sure it's the same thing you fly into a spooky old house through a secret passage to a basement like mausoleum and out of the coffin pops the crypt keeper and tonally we were saying This is yet another movie where it's like kind of horror, but kind of comedy, which was in keeping with the tone of the show. Yeah, I felt super nostalgic watching the intro to this. I definitely watched the TV show and I love that intro going down into that crypt and him popping out and then him being so crass. And then, of course, the the jokes. Yeah, they're they're brutal, um, but they are also intended to be that way. So I definitely enjoyed it. And then, of course, I had forgotten how much it was connected to scantily clad women because that was immediately apparent. As well. <laughs> yeah, there's a little racy nature for sure in the comics and the TV show and this movie. But that was what made the show so exciting to watch as because I had the same thing. I was about, probably with the yeah. same age. Like it was it was, it, you know, you got the impression you were watching. Them, you shouldn't have been watching. It was a little risque. It was on like late at night. These movies were written for teenage boys. Like, absolutely, this is who the audience was. I would agree with that. Let's talk about the beer that we're drinking today. So you just produced this one for me. I have never had it before. Uh, it's from the Refined Fool Brewing Company. That's in Sarnia, Ontario, Canada. Nice. And it's a pretty cool Home can Home of here. producer John. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's a brewed IPA. Uh, it's called Zane Lost His Avocado Bag. And the whole thing is covered in avocados. Billy Zane, man. Billy Zane. We found a beer with Zane in the title. Can you believe it? It's amazing. And the description here says, this champagne-like IPA is a pale, dry, bubbly delight. And I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, this is, I think, like kind of their flagship beer. They have variations on this as well. Um, so let's give it a try. Beautiful. So as I mentioned, we open with the Tales from the Crypt introduction. Kind of the camera flying into a spooky old house through a secret passage. We meet the Crypt Keeper in the basement. He's all crusty and Crypt Keepery, and he laughs. We then cut to an attractive lady on a bed, scantily clad in her underwear. She's covered in blood, and she's talking to her lover about how she just killed her husband, and we see him decomposing in an old bathtub. Yeah, this gets you right into sort of the humor and the sexuality of these kind of movies. Right into it. And... (laughs) She is like super turned on and talking to her lover and she says something that really threw me off. She says, this has gotten me all hot and squishy. Oh, God. I don't know. How did I miss that? I didn't write that down. <laughs> I don't know. That's terrifying. Who uses squishy to describe their arousal? I don't know, man. That's, uh, that, yeah. I don't know how I missed that. That's crazy. Yeah. She takes a bath to get all cleaned up for her lover's arrival. 
but her husband's corpse. Oh, yeah, they have two bathtubs. Guys, said he's decomposing in a bathtub. This house has two bathtubs, I guess, and her husband's decomposing in one. He was kind of in like the basement junk bathtub. A very marked yeah. difference in quality between the two bathtubs. Yeah, and he's what? She dumped acid all over his dead body, or lie, or whatever it yeah. is. So she's taking a bath to clean herself up. But her husband's corpse rises from the tub, lumbers upstairs, raises an axe to murder her. She screams this giant, glorious horror movie scream. And then, cut. Yeah, who's interrupting them? It's the Crypt Keeper. This is all a movie that he's directing. We're going real meta here. Layers on layers. He criticizes the acting. Turns out that it's John Larroquette, star of Night Court. We just had Bull from Night Court a couple weeks ago in uh, Dungeon Master. And now we've got John Larroquette, who, by the way, is a tremendous actor. This yeah. is Oh, yeah. Know. It was entertaining. I enjoyed that he popped in there. And he has a, he's a couple funny moments where he's sort of criticizing the Crypt Keeper. Yeah. Well, this is, and again, just firing off. We were talking about dad jokes. Uh, yeah, the oh, Crypt yeah. Keeper refers to him as Gory Cooper, Robert Deadford instead of Redford. John Larroquette is like, where do they dig this guy up as he walks away? Just, just we're f-ing slathering it on. And then the Crypt Keeper introduces the real movie. Yeah, here we go. Introduces Demon Knight. And it cuts in to a dark and scary kind of ominous evening. And we see a car chase to start it off. Yeah, right into a car chase. It's kind of a low speed chase, though. They're not really like, you know, we got a car just driving. There's a car clearly following him. This eventually escalates. The first car is being driven by... William Sadler playing Frank Breaker. You might recognize him from Die Hard 2. He's like the main bad guy. Yeah. He's been in a bunch of stuff. And the second car is being driven by Billy Zane. Yes. Get excited. The Phantom is back. He (laughs) sure is. (laughs) The first car runs out of gas. Breaker gets out and starts shooting at Billy Zane's car, which bursts into flames and smashes into him. And there is a giant explosion. But Frank Breaker gets clear and he looks at his hand and this is where we first get a glimpse of this strange kind of tattoo he has it's seven stars and uh, three of them actually it turns into two as he's looking at it are glowing this scene was pretty problematic for me he runs out of gas and then like does an amazing car spin move pulls out a rifle and in two shots has zane's car on fire i've never shot a car I don't know how fast it bursts into flames, but it seemed a little quick. Yeah. Well, and then this massive explosion, he walks away. And then this isn't the thing that baffled me the most. When he looked at his hand with the star tattoo, do you remember what sound appeared? I do not. It was like a cougar growl. That comes up later. There's, Every yeah. single time something happens with that tattoo in his hand, there is a cougar growl. It's the wildcat sound. Yeah. Wow. Why? Wildcat. I didn't understand at all the connection between that and anything that happened in this movie. I did not notice it here. I noticed it later at a very kind of pivotal Billy Zane moment. Yeah. I was watching more closely when Billy Zane was on the screen, clearly. Yeah, well, this was the first appearance of the Wildcat, and I was just, like, so confused and kind of loving it. That's uh, good for you, man. You really paid attention to this. I clearly was f***ing dragging my ass watching this movie. (laughs) So, Frank Breaker walks until he finds a diner. He tries to steal a car, but he gets caught by a kid, and he runs away. Then he comes across an old wino. That's Uncle Willie. Now, you want to talk about problematic. <laughs> I, got, I got a couple issues with Uncle Willie in this movie. Uh, but he, this is the introduction of the prophetic homeless guy. Right? It's always, like, always a thing. It always, always happens. This is just like in a horror movie. There's always, I, I guess if we go back to Friday the 13th, this is that random boats guy, that, that ship guy on there. Well, he wasn't homeless. No. You're right. I, I guess he's he not always homeless. He might homeless. have lived on the boat. But there's always some weird kind of prophetic person telling what's going to happen. Yeah. And Uncle Willie, who we're going to see later, is just real real sketchy, dude. A giant perv. Yeah, he is. And it's not the 80s. So there's no excuse for it. <laughs> he takes Frank Breaker to a boarding house in an old church. Frank Breaker, as they approach the house, checks his hand and the last star stops glowing some cops, that's Sheriff Tupper and Deputy Bob, they're investigating the crash. Billy Zane is miraculously okay. He's totally fine. Not a scratch on him. Tells the cops the man he was chasing is dangerous and they've got to find him fast. So Zane appearing out of the fiery cars was hilarious. I guess they're trying to show you that he's like fairly unkillable or it wouldn't touch him. And you, I guess Fire doesn't hurt him. You kind of got that from what it, the other character as well too. Do you remember what he said to the cops to say why he survived? I absolutely do not. Okay. I'm, so sorry. I don't know. I'm doing a terrible job. He said it was the airbags. Okay. Neither of the cars that they crashed into each other had airbags. So I just, I had to no. laugh at yeah, that they, as yeah. I like, I think that was supposed to be a joke, but I was really struggling with it. I would bet money that it was supposed to yeah. be a joke. Back at the boarding house, we meet the rest of the cast. 
There's Irene, who is the owner, Cordelia, who is a hooker, Wally, who is a postal employee who recently lost his job. And then we have a very sassy ex-con, Geraldine is her name. Yeah. That's Jada Pinkett Smith. And a sudden car horn startles Frank Breaker. He's clearly worried. But it's not the cops. It's just another character, Roach, played by Thomas Hayden Church. <laughs> He's a cook uh, from the diner. So was he on Coach? No, he was on Wings. Wings. Oh, that's where he's, he's from. Lowell. Absolutely. That's Lowell from Wings. Yes. yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay, that makes sense. This scene or the scenes that happen right here as they introduce the characters is maybe the most overacting of any of the films we've watched thus far. That is a very bold statement. Yeah, and that seems ridiculous, but I couldn't believe how bad Jada was. I mean, I guess this is early in her career, but the stuff that was sort of coming out, I don't know if it was the writing or it Could was... be the directing. Yeah. I don't know. She might not have had a lot to work with. It was really bad. Yeah. So Irene sees the way Frank Breaker reacts to this car horn, sees how concerned he is, and she starts thinking that something's up. She calls the cops... Now, the cops and Billy Zane show up. We get a bit of a standoff. Right away, Frank Breaker takes a knife out, puts it to Jada Pinkett's throat, and Billy Zane tells the cops correctly that he's not going to hurt the girl. So they just arrest him. He doesn't hurt Jada Pinkett Smith. He just takes the knife away. And Zane is looking for some sort of key. Now, we don't know exactly what it is. Deputy Bob goes upstairs to look, and he finds Roach and Cordelia having some body of evidence style sex. We got, yeah. we got a car battery with some nipple clamps. This was really weird. Why did the deputy who was looking for a key hear some sex noises and decide it's time to pull his gun and, like, arrest the two? I don't know. I Like, every movie we've ever seen where someone hears sex noises, they walk towards them. They go towards the sex noises. You want to see what's happening. I don't know why he pulls the gun. Yeah, but he it was like it was going to be breaking into an armed situation. He was really worried about it. I don't know if he had like a fear of sex or what was happening. <laughs> but <laughs> Deputy quick, Bob definitely, it, it was so strange. And he was so happy when he brought them down and got to show off the like nipple clamps and shit that were going down. Well, he probably thinks it's funny. I mean, she is a prostitute. Technically, that's illegal, right? I guess so. I don't know. I guess it depends on the laws of whatever state they're in. Either way, it's not what they're there for. He doesn't find the key, but Uncle Willie knows where Breaker stashed the key. He brings it out. The key is actually some sort of like strange um, heart-shaped like... Uh, relic. It looked like a relic to me. And yeah. It, and it contained... Like a uh, flask a almost. Yeah, it was cask. like a heart-shaped flask. I agree, yeah. So Billy Zane wants him to put that key in a special box. He doesn't want to touch it for some reason. But first, he wants Uncle Willie to dump out the liquid that's inside. Frank Breaker desperately tells him, don't do that, don't do that. And then he tells everyone that Billy Zane is not what he says he is. Not who he says he is, not what he says he is. It's starting to come down now. You're starting to figure out, well, actually, we figured it out a long time ago. But When he walked out of the flames, it was a good (laughs) indication. They're making it obvious to everyone else, or maybe to the like 12 and 13-year-olds who this is supposed to be for, that uh, he is not a human. Yeah, and we've got some tension right now, but before anyone can do anything, the sheriff gets a call that both of the cars in the crash were stolen, not just one car. So he decides to take everyone down to the station to sort it out. And as soon as he makes a move to do this, Billy Zane punches through his head, (laughs) straight through it. It leaves a hole in the dude's head and then just pulls his head off the body, but not like on purpose because it's stuck on his arm. (laughs) So this this was amazing. So the movie got a plus one enjoyability from me for this. Right as, there? as we've talked about. Uh, How many f-ing movies is this now where someone's either punched a dude's head clean off or now he's punched through it? This is unbelievable. Yeah. So this punch through the head is hilarious. And then it gets stuck. And so yeah, he's trying to get it out and he's shaking like it shaking out. shaking his arm Then off. he rips it out. And then he punches Breaker in the face with the head that's attached to his hand. <laughs> yeah, it, man. It, it was amazing. It's incredible. Breaker manages to uncuff himself. Zane throws the head at the other cop and says, heads up. (laughs) (laughs) It's terrible. That made me laugh so hard. I'm embarrassed how much that made me laugh. Uh, Oh, yeah. Now, I will say that his delivery of all of these, like, crappy puns throughout the movie was excellent like he's, that was he's dialed in he's he did all a good in job yeah. in this role he, he definitely committed and in that's terms the word of, no matter what you say he has committed to yeah this. and and i thought he actually did a pretty good job in a poor movie this shouldn't take away from him being that leading man you thought at 11 years old oh if anything it enforces it i'm like why didn't he get more work after yeah. this so frank breaker burns 
Billy Zane with the key when Zane attacks him. So the keys clearly has some sort of power that makes Billy Zane, you know, sustain damage. Billy Zane goes flying out the window and starts ranting about humans. He says the property is hereby condemned. Then he slices his palm with a very, very long fingernail. This is like a 1970s cocaine fingernail. Yeah, it was gross. He grows it, I guess, and like stabs yeah. it into himself. But when he stabs himself, it's not blood that comes out. It's neon green goo. And when he throws it on the ground, demons rise from where the goo landed. We are right into the, like, the horror special effects stuff now. Yeah, it looked at first like it was alien babies from aliens growing. I was like wondering if there was going to be a crossover moment here. But well, the no. neon green blood matches that too. Yeah, but then all of a sudden they actually turn into pretty convincing kind of scary demons. I thought that That's decent, yeah. the work on those was pretty good. The power goes out in the diner. When everyone turns back to look, the demons are gone. But not for long, though, as they start busting through the doors and windows. Now, Breaker shoots a bunch of them. Then he pours a little bit of the red liquid from the key on the door frame. And it flows up and around the door and makes a force field that keeps the demons out. Once you try to come through, they just die. Now, Billy Zane tries to come through, but he gets force fielded and says... This just cracked me up. Give me the key breaker for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> for crying out loud? Why, is that a- <laughs> why are you putting me through this, man? I don't want to have to create more demons and send them through the wall to get this goddamn this, key. I know it's such a PG way of being yeah. like, like, why wasn't you like, give me the key? What the f***? You mother give me that key no I, for crying out loud i did notice that that was a weird thing that was happening in this movie there is definitely some swearing but it feels like they hold some punches and i don't think a demon would be holding many punches at this point and then it goes back to what you said about their target audience they're trying to bring in like they're trying to bring in kids who want to watch this right trying to keep the rating yeah, low i think exactly i don't know what the rating actually is and let's probably look at that before we make that statement but whatever they're trapped inside. Breaker explains what they're up against. And we get some flashbacks to like the very distant past, a time of crucifixion when he apparently has memories from there. And there's clearly more to the story of this key than we currently know. Yeah, this was pretty f***ed up. It's kind of like it seemed like it was out of nowhere. All of a sudden he's holding the key and then has this flashback. They're clearly trying to draw you to like jesus being crucified yeah, i was like is, is that jesus yes and that was my assumption pretty quickly and then you also notice that in that scene some of that blood drips on a demon and what happens same thing he dies same way that we yeah the force and so we're yeah. like this bottle is filled with fucking jesus's blood and that is exactly what it is it turns <laughs> out yeah back in the diner a cat shows up and they're worried the cat is possessed so they kind of chase after it and it's not but it got in the house through a tunnel that demons could pass through demons like billy zane he's in the house sort of he starts sweet talking cordelia and offering her what she wants most in the world love yeah this was after she'd been a abused by her like kind of bow roach or whatever well, clearly she has terrible choice in men and he's saying i will get like find you true love like disney prince love yeah and this starts to work on her right she's yep. she's not been very happy in her life uh and now she's like he's gonna have true love all she's gotta do is just let him in just let billy zane in so i guess he's not in the house like I, yeah he was outside that. of the house but when she lets he's like him projecting himself yeah, somehow he's yeah. trying to use his like special demon forces to take over her body but i think she has to give up her soul to let this happen yeah well that's the implied agreement for sure now wally the fired postal employee from earlier he is crushing really hard on cordelia he goes to kind of check on her we see some evidence of that earlier the next time we see them, though, she is eating his flesh. She's been demonized. Yes, so she's turned into a demon, and we hear Wally screaming, and it's not those screams of pleasure we heard earlier from that same room. No. Nope. She beats up Breaker, and she rips Irene's arm off. Oh, this was actually pretty awesome. Irene had somehow got the key and was about to put it on her to, yep. to grab it, but she grabs Irene's arm and twists it right off. I was like, Clean this off. is awesome. That was pretty... I like that scene. That was good, man. Yeah. They kill Demon Cordelia, and they debate whether or not to try escaping through the tunnel. It's actually a mine shaft, we find out. Roach wants to go for it, and he starts like hammering the wall, which gives Frank Breaker a crucifixion flashback. And this is where we get more evidence. This is, in fact, the blood of Jesus that's in this yeah. um, uh, cask flask. Another thing. one of those weird... Yeah. Definitely. So they enter the tunnels, and Uncle Willie is leading the way because he knows the mines. Maybe he used to work in the yeah. mines before they closed. Maybe that's why he's currently unemployed and uh, why now? Yeah, it's down the shaft time for sure. Yep. They're ready to go. Now, at this point, Jada Pinkett Smith, she starts hearing voices as well. But this time, it's not Billy Zane. It's the kid from earlier. Yeah. How did he get down in the mine? Well, the answer is he's running away from his family who are also 
demons, they've been possessed too. So this possession is kind of sweeping the the small town community. They escape back to the house because I guess the mine shaft, you know, there's demons. It's not, you know, not a clean exit. But Roach blows the force field by shooting this kid's dad, who was his old boss in the diner. Bad impulse control by him. This is a, an example of this Roach character f***ing it up over and over and over again. He's the most obnoxious character in the entire movie. I think yeah. intentionally so. Oh, he's supposed to be a dick for sure. Yeah. But he shoots the demon in the eye and the explosion takes down the force field. And this is, it was, I was sort of confused by this whole thing. Why do the demons explode when you shoot them in the eye? We find that out a little bit later. Okay. We're actually going to find out why, but we find out that that is a thing. This is the first example of what will actually kill the demons. And it's something about releasing their soul. I don't know. It was a strange thing. Well, uh, the eyes are the window to the soul. Oh, that was it. Yeah, exactly. That's the line that they share. And I was always, I thought that was kind of funny, but okay. And then we're back and we're having this like World War One flashback. Yeah. It, I don't like, I guess it's World War One. He's, you know, clearly in military garb and there's a lot of shooting going on. And he shoots a demon. There's just a demon there in the times of World War One. Then his commanding officer hands him the key, and Frank is confused, especially when he looks at his hand and now he sees seven stars in there. So clearly this flask is some sort of thing that is passed from person to person, like a protector role. Someone has to guard the key. We're transferring the power of the demon knight. Oh, he is the demon knight. Yeah. yeah. This is knight this is, is spelled happening. K-N-I-G-H-T, in case yes. you have not seen the poster or whatever. It's, it's like a play on words i guess and this is where it's happening so yeah there's it's a funny in that scene there's a funny implication that the germans were demons right because it was a german definitely addressed that's a com but that's a common like there's there's all kinds of fiction and stuff where like nazis were vampires or they were werewolves right like they're so evil that they get like portrayed as an even more evil creature than what they already were yes so about that we get a little backstory now in the beginning there were seven keys and they were controlled by demons that gave them the power of the cosmos But when God said, let there be light, it scattered the demons and all seven keys. But now the demons are back and they have six of the seven keys. Breaker has the last key and whoever the protector of the key is has to keep it safe and stocked with blood. Yeah. Otherwise, human race is fucked. Yeah. Once you lose the the blood is what kills the demons or stops them from entering stuff. Once you lose that, it's a problem. We had another wildcat growl right here, too. Did we get another one? Yeah, I, didn't catch that yeah, one I wrote it down here. Every time it happened, I wrote it down. I, it might have happened as part of the Nazi scene. Okay. Um, but yeah, Wildcat growls back. Fascinating. Yeah. So he's, Frank Breaker's telling them all this, but they realize, wait a second, where's Danny? Danny, the little kid, is not there anymore. They go looking for him, and Billy Zane tries to seduce Jada Pinkett Smith like he did with Cordelia. Now, this is where I first noticed the Wildcat sound because as he's telling her why she should, you know, forget about these people and, you know, come with me, like, you know, let me, whatever. Like, then I hear the Wildcat sound. I'm like, this is incredible. <laughs> wildcat. Uh, so she doesn't go for it, but he maybe kind of possesses her anyway. It's we, kind of it, unclear. They leave it unclear. They kind of say, like, she sort of pushes him away and we can't quite tell. And the way that she comes back, she's kind of in a daze or it's yeah. it's been hard for her. I keep writing down all these things with Roach, too. Roach, during this time, apologizes to Breaker for being such a dick. And he's like, oh, you have balls, man. Like (laughs) That was the best best compliment you can have. And you sort of think, okay, maybe this Roach character is not going to continue to be an asshole. No, he's such a douchebag. Great job by Thomas Hayden Church playing a douchebag. Well done, sir. Well, after Jada, like comes back and we're not sure whether she's possessed or not we very quickly go into another potential possession sequence here yeah it's uncle willie good old uncle willie he finds the kid and he finds it but he also finds some booze not necessarily in that order we get the impression that uncle willie's been like stashing booze around the place and kind of hitting it for a little while now and takes this kid to a hallucination of a beach bar with a bunch of topless women, all the booze you can drink, and Billy Zane playing the role of the affable bartender. This is a great Billy Zane section Oh, he's so as charming. Well. He's super charming. He's smoking one of those little cigars. He's got the big aviator sunglasses on. Yep. And he just pours him a couple quick glasses of alcohol. And you know Willie can't stop with all those boobs in his face and oh that my God, liquor. The women are like, oh, yeah. come on, Willie, come on. Oh. Yeah, and Willie's just surrounded by topless women. And all. Like, yeah, he's, he's an alcoholic. You're giving him all the booze. And mostly, the, I think, what sways him more, do you think? The booze or the ladies? It's got to be the ladies, right? Pro- well, I mean, the ladies are there for the 12 and 13-year-old audience, for sure. Oh, big time. Um, but the booze is probably what puts him over the edge there. I would imagine 
I could be wrong about this, but there's probably a scenario in Billy Zane's real life where he's been behind a bar mixing <laughs> cocktails for like 12 topless women. Uh, you don't think so? Just firing off jokes and stuff. I could see it. Your, your hope. Well, maybe if he had to become that superstar, which you had have hoped or he deserved. Believe it or not, Uncle Willie goes for this deal. Uncle Willie accepts it and turns into a demon and it goes after the little kid. It goes after the boy. And one of the things that happens when they become demons is their faces split apart and their tongues become like these crazy... Glowing, yeah, it's like a glowing neon... Crazy weapon almost. Yep. So there's a pretty cool fight between Breaker and Uncle Willie as they're like trying to combat it. And I'm really enjoying it, except they add in all these ridiculous fake punch sounds. Oh my god, that's true. Yeah, the the fight sound effects are awful. I was like, I didn't understand why they were doing that because the action was pretty entertaining and kind of suspenseful. And in the end, they do stop Uncle Willie the demon, um, but the punch sounds just took it away. Yeah, so Breaker chops off Uncle Willie's head, but the body just keeps coming, right? Yes. Until Danny ends up impaling his head on some antlers. <laughs> um, now, during yeah. this, Jada Pinkett Smith, Geraldine, she hesitates... So we still have to question whether or not she is possessed. Yeah, you're right. So this is happening. At the same time, Roach, our character who is turned to the good side, right? What do we see him Allegedly. Doing? Yeah. Well, yeah. So Billy Zane also offers deals to Irene. He's like, hey, you want your arm back? And he offers a deal to Roach. And Roach ends up bringing him the key. And when he goes to give Billy Zane the key, Billy Zane promises, I won't kill you. You give me the key. You can get out of here. But he lies because he's a demon. As soon as he gets the key from Roach, demons immediately wipe him out. And you know what? Good. Because yeah. Roach is a dick. Well, and on his way down the stairs, as he's going, he says, You know this hell on earth business? Big f***ing deal. I got hemorrhoids. Yeah, my hemorrhoids are so bad. <laughs> like, it would be a really kind of, yeah, like, so what? weird. Why was he comparing his hemorrhoids to the end of the world? Well, they kill Roach, and they wipe away the blood seal. And so now, Billy Zane, he's real confident. He's got a little swagger. And right away, he gets an arrow right in his eye. Just eats an arrow in the eyeball. It's incredible. <laughs> Knocks him off the second story back down to the first yep. story. And they get the key back. Breaker gets the key back. Yep. And him and Jada Pinkett Smith, Geraldine, and the kid run while Irene and Deputy Bob basically sacrifice themselves with a bunch of grenades. Very noble of them. That it turns out... Uh, Wally was going to use his grenades to blow up the post office. Yeah, such of course, a cliche. They go to the cliche. Such a cliche. Worker. Uh, this is where Bob becomes a hero. He was such a lame character through the whole movie, and then all of a sudden he has this like moment of yes, I can do this. He didn't earn that moment. No, no absolutely not. not. It bit. was it was not necessary. Or I mean, maybe it was necessary to move the plot along, but it definitely didn't fit within his character. No, he, he's arresting people for earlier and now he is blowing himself up with a belt full of grenades yeah well they do it and they basically buy some time for breaker and geraldine and the kid and they're almost safe they can see daylight it's just around the corner but there's only enough blood left to cover one entrance okay they don't they can't block out all the demons so instead of choosing an entrance frank breaker pours the blood all over Geraldine's hand, Jada Pinkett Smith's hand. She is now the chosen one. But before she can take the key from Breaker, Danny has been demonized suddenly by his comic books. Yeah, the comic book lures him. Clearly comics are bad. So he he now attacks Frank Breaker with some very middling creature effects. Yeah. This is they've, he they've uses time to like rip from, out his stomach, yeah. right? It like gets right into his into his torso and starts tearing out with his tongue. Like the demons were pretty good. We were doing okay with the effects and now I feel like we've taken a bit of a step backwards. You didn't like the makeup on him? It's, it's, it's closer to the end of the movie. I wonder if they're running out of money and time. Uh, maybe. They're probably just a uh, So he's reaching for the key but Geraldine kicks him through the window seal and blows him up. So that's the end of Danny. We got Frank Breaker. He's dying now. He is dying. And he fills the key with his own blood. Because I guess that's how it works. Like once you die, you put your own blood in there. And he hands it to Jada Pinkett Smith, Geraldine. She, as soon as she gets it, she also gets the memories. We see a whole bunch of flashing images yeah. by. And the seven star tattoo. And with that, the story of Frank Breaker has come to an end. We have a new demon night. We do. Now... I have a question about this. If you are running low on the blood, can you just like slice your hand open, squeeze some in there, fill it up again? Or does it have to be when you're dying? No, it it seems to me like the only way that the blood would be effective was if you filled it 
with the blood of the previous demon knight. Like it has to be the blood of the person before you. They have to die almost like a Jesus kind of sacrifice. So it has to be a sacrifice like Jesus. And I think that's the only reason why it kept getting refilled and being useful. But then that puts you in a tough spot because if you are the protector, we're almost out of blood and you're like, you know, 35 years old, happy, healthy. You have to like basically be like, well, I got to kill myself. (laughs) I guess I gotta find someone yeah. else for this and just no, like, you do. and it's breaker kind of mentions that, right? He sort of, he says that he knew at the start of this night that it was, going to be his last and that he'd be passing it on to someone. He kind is of, is that made, what the stars burning out mean? Yes. Kind of? Well, oh, okay. I think once the stars align, you know, it's your last evening. Okay. So I don't think you had a choice. Like he knew that once those stars formed that circle, it was game over for him. Did you write this movie? Why do you have all these answers? <laughs> this is so on, you're so on point yeah. for this one. I was, I was all over this. So, uh, so he he definitely knew that it was coming and he had to pass it along. Well, and, he passes it along. And then, yeah, Jada. Yeah, so we think maybe this is it. But Billy Zane is still here. He kind of rises up into the attic. He, now he's wearing cool sunglasses because he's a cool dude. And also, you know, he lost an eye. It turns out that the whole uh, eye thing only works on lower level demons, he says. Yeah, we find out he's an advanced demon he's wearing those sunglasses though it helped him pull off the douchey like sort of confident person that he was in this movie, yeah for sure that's what i meant by cool guy <laughs> <laughs> douchey confidence is absolutely cool. absolutely so he tells geraldine to give it up give the key up he reaches out to her and as he's doing it, he comments that she's covered in blood but it's not her blood it turns out that she is covered in frank breaker's blood it burns billy zane and he runs what a smart fucking move Great move, right? You, yeah. If you're becoming the new demon knight and you know that the previous demon knight's blood is going to hurt the demons, you would f-ing take a bath in their corpse. For sure. You pick that dead body up, you you know, shake it around, let it rain down on you. Yeah, and it oh, works yeah. really well for a very brief moment. Well, I was going to say, speaking yeah. of smart moves, she tries to leave, but Billy Zane attacks her with a shower curtain. He wraps <laughs> it around her so the blood isn't touching him, and as he does it, he says... <laughs> oh god why did she, I, she <laughs> oh god damn it zane yeah oh. she wanders after him in this house oh. i'm not sure why i guess she was going to try to finish him or whatever it's great shit um but that was funny where he he just like yanks pushes her into the shower curtain and yeah. wraps her up and, well, and then, then he starts washing the blood off her yeah so she stabs him in the other eye but it has no effect this is where he tells us that it only works on low-level demons while he's kind of vamping a little bit, like, you know, a little monologue, she is drinking some of the blood. We see her kind of quickly drink some. And even though he's got the key now, Billy Zane says he wants her. And he unleashes a fire crotch. But, like, for real. Yeah, this was so fucked up. His dick and balls are on fire. So this whole scene is really weird. It's clear that just getting the key wasn't enough for this higher level demon he wants to be the only demon to ever like bring back a demon knight he, yeah and he, i don't know if he wants yeah, her that to, would be a big accomplishment i don't know if he wants her to be his bride or what it is i think he's impressed with her yeah. and like let's be honest here man jada pinkett smith is looking pretty sharp in this movie yeah if I, if I can say that well that's fair um and but the way he wants to do it is there's some weird dancing and then he he's showing off his dance moves plays he can dance yeah he shows off some strange dance moves and then literally a beam of fire shoots from his dick area and uh, <laughs> hits Jada. Like, I, I was so confused. I was like, what the hell? And the beam or the light effects in this movie are not as bad as Moonraker. Not as bad as Dungeon Master. Not either. as bad as Dungeon Master. But they're really bad. Like, compared to the other makeup and other effects, you can tell this is the beginning of decent like of digital sort yeah. of lighting effects you know what speaking of just to go back for a second speaking of billy zane dancing did you know that he was supposed to be the lead in dirty dancing really he was replaced by patrick swayze that was supposed to be billy fucking zane speaking of star making oh my god that's a lie i'm 90 percent sure it's true <laughs> <laughs> you just made this up no, to no. help up billy zane's career there we're is gonna, no we're way edit. i'm not just There's here i'm no not way. here f- pumping Billy Zane's tires. We're not I'm editing not that out it. because this has to be proven in the court of the internet at we'll some point. We'll release this later yeah. as bonus content. <laughs> no, I'm not even sure too. So after this weird fire thing. Dance weirdness. Yep. She's trying, he's trying to lure her with his yeah, sexuality. He tries, he tries yeah. to tell her that he loves her, but yeah. she is not into it. He pulls her in close, says he's going to take her heart, which I don't know if he means metaphorically or literally. She spits the blood in his face. And he transforms and explodes. 
Yeah. What the f***? This guy was like invulnerable. Like nothing was hurting the whole time. Except the blood of the chosen one, the demon knight. I guess so. But she spits like a pretty small amount on his face. Well, he's already gotten stabbed in both eyes. I mean, his face has taken some damage. I had trouble with the way that he was finished off so easily with that demon knight blood. And then the explosion was huge. Right? He burns up. He explodes. Yeah. And then the whole thing. Big hostel explodes. Like the yep. whole thing is this giant explosion. They take a very tiny model of it and explode it and try yeah, to show it as that's a big what model. It is. But of course, who survives? Cheraline. Yeah, it's she's fine. The, she's the demon knight. Yeah, go, yeah, whatever. It's daylight. She made it. She goes to Frank Breaker's body and refills the key. She gets some more blood. Or yeah. he's not he's not out of blood yet. He's no, still, still some. Even though she yeah. bathed in it, like he gives her a good you. squeeze and some of it falls into the flask. Yeah. Then she hops on a bus, and she seals the entrance to the bus as she's leaving. Good thing she did. Well, I was going to say, the next stop of the bus, some guy goes to get on, and he kind of hesitates and stops, and he's like looking at the entrance, and he's like, I'll wait for the next one. And he walks off whistling the Tales from the Crypt theme song. So this yeah. is going to be, she's going to be pursued. This is He's the new Billy Zane. He was holding the briefcase that is supposed to gather the key. Like, you can yeah, tell. Yeah, like, this is, is, is going to be hat. an ongoing thing. Yeah. He had, you it was tell very nice It hat. was a sweet demon hat, for sure. And now we get a Crypt Keeper postscript where it's a red carpet premiere, and they end up putting the Crypt Keeper in a guillotine. He's already in a guillotine. They cut his head off. And he one last dad joke. I asked for final cut, and I got it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're out, man. We hit the credits. Oh, yes. But then, post credits, the Crypt Keeper kind of pops up. They do one of those, like, the Porky Pig Looney Tunes, like the yeah. circle thing zooms exactly in, his head's in there. And he promotes the next movie, Dead Easy, it's called, which did not end up happening. Oh, I wonder what Dead Easy was about. I can tell you. It was supposed to take place in New Orleans, and it was supposed to involve either vampires or zombies, like, basically... Being slutty? Rising from the swamp. I, what? Being slutty? Dead easy. Definitely makes me think of a... Like, oh. Yeah. oh. Well, because the big easy is New Orleans. Oh, okay. Although, is that, is that because people are easy in New Orleans? I don't... Maybe. I I've don't think been. so. I don't I've think that's a Orleans. connection. I would love to go. If you're from New Orleans and you know if people there are easy, please let us know. <laughs> please don't. Yes, yeah, so that movie did not end up happening. Um, oh, okay. They ended up instead making Bordello of Blood that we talked about. Which is definitely about slutty vampires. Oh, big time. Yeah. But... Did you know that once a, there were supposed to be three Tales from the Crypt movies? They only did two because they did not do very well. But other movies that were supposed to be Tales from the Crypt movies, From Dust Till Dawn. Doesn't surprise me. And The Frighteners with Michael J. Fox. You ever really? seen that? Really? That was supposed to be Tales from the Crypt. Whoa. They bought the script for this reason. And then when Tales from the Crypt movies kind of tanked or they yeah. shifted over something else, released it on its own. They just, yeah. They wanted to move them away from being sort of the humorous horror movies that Tales from the Crypt must be or I think should be? Tales or? The, they were like, just Tales from the Crypt thing's not making money. F*** it. We'll put this out on its own. Yeah. But yeah, th those were supposed to be Tales from the Crypt movies. Huh. And this is the only proof of Dead Easy that never ended up happening. Huh, so, that's cool. So, a little weird kind of post note to that yeah, one. Yeah, I didn't watch that. I wish I had known that was behind there, but that's okay. Well, it's it's not much. It, yeah, like, it literally, he just fires, I mean, he fires off one more dad joke and that's it. Okay. But yeah, that's, uh, that's all. And that's Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight. So Ooh. it's time to rate the movie. We're yeah. going to do this on a scale of 1 to 10 for how bad it is. And then a scale of 1 to 10 for how enjoyable it is. And the goal, the hope is that we find a movie that is 10 out of 10 bad and 10 out of 10 enjoyable. What we call the... Crit, 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 I wonder if people are getting tired of that. I, I hope they're not because it's pretty funny. But you know what? I'm not, so we're not going <laughs> to stop doing it. I like, I like saying it with the echo. <laughs> Shout out to our D and D friends. Uh, so for me, this movie's pretty bad. The fact that it's supposed to be a comedy, partly comedy, like they did the job they were supposed to do. They made a Tales from the Crypt movie. I'm saying eight or ten bad. Yeah, that's fair. Um. I really struggled with the writing, acting, directing in this movie. <laughs> just just those things? That's those it? three things to me were <laughs> really problematic. The only person who puts in a performance that uh, like I felt Say funny. it. <laughs> Say it. Who Billy, is it? Billy Zane it's carries Billy the show. Zane. He had to He's carry so the good. show. And he did. He carried it. Um, I. It was nostalgic for me. I'm going to give it... A nine out of ten bad. Wow, yeah, man. Nine out of ten I bad. mean, that's only one different number, but like still. I really, really struggled. The very first time I thought about my number, 
I thought of a 10 and I pulled Come it back. On. I did. You can't, it's not I, a 10. I pulled it back because I, I don't think it is a 10. But well, if you've seen the TV show, this is this movie encapsulates in a lot of ways what the TV show is about. There's cheesy effects, there's whatever, there's jokey dad jokes. But like, it wasn't not, as you know. funny as the TV show. And that's well, what pulled it back for me, right? Like that's what hurt it. It was it tried to be too serious and it didn't pull it off. But it, it it's not a 10 bad. I, I I'm gonna stick with my nine bad. All right, but how enjoyable was it for you? This was harder for me to rate than the uh, the bad scale. I, I struggled with this as well. I thought there was some humor I enjoyed. I thought Billy Zane had some moments. He's charming. You can't... if He did. No matter what you say about Billy Zane, you have to admit he is a charming mother Compared to some of the other horror we've watched, the makeup and other stuff was actually pretty good. I, I thought yeah. that there was some convincing stuff. I enjoyed some of the music and sound effects in this as well. Wildcat? Yeah, well, the, the Wildcat, Wildcat was hilarious. So I strange. laughed every time. I can't believe it's in there more than one. I have to go back and watch this again to see if it's in there more than once. I can't believe it. I don't know how I missed it the first it like, two It starts with a sweet like Nine Inch Nails song on the intro and some other stuff that like sort of pulled me back to the nostalgia of it. So I gave this movie a seven for enjoyable but I had to give it plus one for the head punch because any I, I I made this so wait, promise. You're earlier. saying it's an eight, or it would have been a six. No, it's an eight. It it's would an have, eight. It would wow. Have, so, and it really shouldn't be an eight. It, it shouldn't be. And and I probably won't watch it again, as we know. <laughs> That's the, it's your mo, right? I probably won't watch it again. But it's a seven for Billy Zane, for the cost, like for the makeup and for the music and sound effects. But a plus one for the head punch off. Which Just is for the head I punch. I, I love to it. Do it. Yeah. As a guy who has two or three rules about things that will automatically bump up to a plus <laughs> yeah. one, I'm yeah. good with it. Yeah. For me, it's a six. Other than Billy Zane, there's just not a lot in it for me. Like it's when I think of the TV show, most of the themes of the TV show are like some horrible person does a horrible thing and they kind of get their comeuppance, and it's usually kind of humorous. This is actually, I know I said, I you know it was they did a, a movie version of the TV show. This actually kind of diverges from that a little bit in a way where I'm like this, other than the creepy bird intros and like some of the dad uh, jokes, it doesn't kind of fit what I remember the show being. So as I'm watching it, I'm loving every scene that Billy Zane is in and I enjoy the creepy bird kind of, you know, bookending it start and end, but I don't know. Not great. It's a six for me. No, I think that's fair. Actually, in my book, I had originally written down a six. It, it was a struggle to watch on my own. This would be something that would have been better as a 12-year-old boy who hadn't seen breasts um, <laughs> and didn't have a lot of humor. <laughs> that, that This is sort of <laughs> where it goes. But 12-year-old uh, me, the guy punching through the head, I'm sure that that it f***ing entertained 12-year-old me to know a great yeah. like, oh, no yeah. limit. Absolutely. I would probably laugh my ass off for that. As not the I laugh now as a, as yeah. a 38 year old man. <laughs> okay, what about the beer? You know what? I don't know. I think this is the first brute IPA I've had. It's a champagne style IPA. I really like this. This is real good. Like it's 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 more carbonated than I feel like most IPAs are. Maybe that's the that's the champagne the brute element. I don't know what makes a brute IPA, but I really enjoyed this. And like 76 percent alcohol. For a 7.6 beer, it's a smooth drink. Oh, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I thought that it definitely lived up to its sort of dry, bubbly, uh, delicious taste that it suggested. I don't understand the name, why it's called Zane Loss's Avocado Bag, uh, and why it's covered in avocados. Because I, I would almost think that it would have avocado like. I as wondered a part that. Of it. Yeah. Um, and it didn't, which I'm probably good for. Like I yeah, like I avocado, I but I don't want it in do my beer. For, yeah. yeah. Um, but I agree. It was definitely good. Definitely check out Refined Fool Beer in Sarnia, Ontario, or if you see it in your local beer store, beer providers. Yeah. yeah. I don't, as for the name, I can't speak to the name, but it seems like from what I've seen of their beers, a lot of them just have weird, like random names. Maybe they're inside jokes with the guys yeah. who like run the brewery. If but, they ever hear this, I want them to send us an explanation of this. But no, I can, I can see why this is kind of their flagship beer because it's very accessible. As a 7.6 IPA too, which is sweet. Yeah, right? strong, like really strong well recommend for me. And I'm not an IPA guy, so that'll tell you something about how good it is. Yeah, that's wicked. So um, that takes care of that. Next week, we are going to be watching... I almost can't believe I'm saying this out loud. Little uh, dramatic film starring Tom Cruise. Cocktail. <laughs> really? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, I'm so excited. This is so, so of its time. Like, you're going to see... Just 80s era excess. It's going to be tremendous. You've seen it before or no? I 
think so, or I've definitely seen pieces or chunks of it, but I don't remember it very well. He, is this where he becomes a bartender on oh, like yeah, a tropical but like island? A, but like a no, sorry. Well, he spends time on an island, but he becomes essentially like a like a like a like a show bartender, like a trick bartender. Oh. Him and his him and another guy work out like bartending routines. They entertain the people of New York to to know. And, uh, small end. Yeah, this sounds like a dream to me. It's just Tom Cruise mowing through hot ladies and uh, <laughs> doing trick bartending things. So it get great. excited. And I'm, I, I'm for, the, for me, I am so excited for the beer we're drinking for that movie. It's going to be a great one. That'll be next week. In the meantime, you know, please, if you haven't already, follow us on Twitter or Instagram at the BMB podcast. Sweet. If you have any suggestions for movies or beers, if you have any complaints uh, or you want to send us any nudes, uh, please do so. Whoa. You, sorry. Did you say news? Yeah, exactly. If you want to send us any news, send it at the BMB podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. Absolutely. And you know what? Thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. I'm Cooper. And I'm Nolan. We'll see you next time on Bad News and Beer. And uh, keep it zany. Okay. Yeah, I got a little bit there. Ready for your dead time story? 